objective. Go to the Watts funeral. Yeah, let's see if let's see if the world's most so. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we're we should be expecting a payout, right? Because we kind of did. We found his killer. Yeah. Well, it's, I'm not sure what the precise wor wording of it of the. Remember, we spoke to his lawyer. Or, or, or the recording of his lawyer. Yeah. I'm not sure if he specified the killer, yeah. if, or if it was like whoever's responsible. Mm, like, because like if someone like if someone arranged to have Sam killed, then they might not they might not be satisfied with just the hired hand, as it were. Oh yeah, the, the world's least enthusiastic stripper is still here. There he goes. <laughs> Yeah. Drink it in, drink it in, ladies. <laughs> oh, by the way, I've decided to na I'm naming my, uh, remember we, you know, our replacement for Johnny Five? Yes. His name is now Bob, which was the name of a, which is, you ever see the movie The Black Hole? Uh, maybe. It's a really old science fiction movie. He's this flying robot in it. And I believe he was, he was voiced. Oh, I think. He, and he was voiced by Slim Pickens. It sounds familiar. It's the one like there was like it was that spaceship, and there was the uh, like there was like, like the captain had killed. There was like there was like that spaceship in orbit around that black hole, and the captain had killed the whole crew and turned them into cyborgs. It sounds very familiar. All right. All right, let's let's have a word with Satan here. Welcome back, Flandry. Good to be back, Mister Clue. What's the latest news? I feel like I should be asking you. Word around here is that you were closing in on the Ripper when you last left. Dare I ask how that went? He's in the ground. Where he belongs. Good. His soul is now mine! <laughs> and yet your shoulders... <laughs> and yet your shoulders are no more relaxed, and you still survey this room like a man who has yet to return from war. This isn't over, is it? The Ripper may have been killing on someone else's orders. The big guy sighs. I was hoping this would soon be all, beh all be behind us. The Baron's has a short memory, but for wounds such as these, it makes an exception. See this prolonged, and I fear for how it may forever change the landscape. Gangs have already started to take advantage of the chaos left in the Ripper's wake. And that only serves to destabilize what semblance of order there was, paving the way for the megacorps to make land grabs and push poor... Sinless further to the fringes. Remember, SI has a system identification number. It's uh, it's important, like, ID number. If you don't have one, it's, like, very difficult to interact with a lot of normal society. Right. Further to the fringes, where the, data start, where the dangers are greatest. Sooner or later, even the Union could be threatened. So take an army, Mr. Clue. Maybe a couple. Take care, Flandry. Okay, we can go down into the basement see if anyone has anything to say. But yeah, it was like, okay, yeah, there's like that spaceship, it's orbiting that black hole, and he's got that giant robot named Maximilian. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I think I... Cool movie. This. Has a really weird ending. Let's see what Dr. Castle is here. Doc Castle looks to be better rested and in better spirits than the last time you saw her. She's also clearly had a shower and a change of clothes. Maybe even some sleep. Her eyes are sharp when they turn up from her work to see you. Greet you. Welcome back, Flandry. Still in one piece, I see. More is the pity for me, but I'll still take your money. Perhaps a full physical's in order. We can call it a medical consultation. That's where I roughly determine the odds of your survival based on your professional proclivities. It comes with a lollipop. So what will it be? Actually, I'm curious how many patients you've lost over the years. Dr. K... I noticed you were in a good mood, so I decided to fix that. <laughs> Dr. Castle sets down her work and fixes you with a hard look. Her expression normally falls on an axis of varying degrees of indifference, depending on her level of tiredness. It has shifted over to something decidedly darker. Is this morbid curiosity? Call it professional curiosity. But I suppose I should be equally professional and answer without judging you for asking. And I should not let it bias me the next time you fall under my knife. Oh, no. To give you a hard number is difficult. <laughs> there are many who I would have considered patients that never made it home. And so I suppose one could say they died while under my care, though not as a result of it. But the number I think you want 
is the number of patients who died on my table. And that number is six. Six who I was unable to save spread across a 13-year career. I remember each and every one, down to the smallest detail, including the moment where I realized I could do nothing more for them. I would argue that four of those six were beyond helping from the moment they passed through my door. The fifth died as a result of complications while installing, while installing a stolen piece of experimental cyberware, which I had cautioned against using. And the sixth? Entirely my fault. I made a mistake. I can't claim I was overtired or inexperienced or distracted. I simply made the wrong decision, and a young man died as a result. I'm sorry, Dr. Castle. She picks up her tablet and resumes her work. Yes, well, will there be anything else? I actually, I actually know a couple guys who are uh, trauma surgeons. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice guys. Oh. Fucked up senses of humor. Yeah. It's not a cri kind of have to. Not a critic. No, it's not a criticism. Just. Mm. <sighs> so, I actually uh, asked Logan um, because I, I was thinking about Shadowrun the other day. And I was wondering, do you think it would be possible to leave uh, something in your will for the person who kills you? You mean, like, to the person who kills you? Yeah. Like, like have that in your will, like, to whoever killed me. That's an interesting question, can you? <laughs> Logan, our Logan our friend, says our friend Logan, he doesn't see why not. Our friend Logan is a uh, law student, for context. Yeah. Well, and he works at a law firm, so like he he talks about legal stuff all the time, and uh, like I was just like out of the blue, I was like, um, "Hey, can I will something to the person who kills me?" And he's like, "I don't, I don't know why you're asking me." <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. You're, you're going to hunt the da most dangerous game of all, man. <laughs> and it's killer be. Okay. There's some sort of, like, weird-ass detective novel in that idea. I just, somehow. Oh, yeah, I know. I'll have to think about All it. All right, let's talk to Algernon but, here. Yeah. <clears throat> Algernon stands stock still, his eyes close, and his face composed in a mask of stern concentration. But then a small store snore escapes his nose, instantly shattering the elf's carefully manufactured mystique. The clearing of your throat is enough to rouse the talismonger from his meditation. And that, that's freaking awesome that he can sleep standing up. Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, I wish I could. Flandry, I was watching your approach from the astral realm. <laughs> of course you were. So good of you to visit again. <laughs> what might I do for you this fine day? So, how are things in the astral? Always a curious place, the astral. Though a mirror world to our own, it is ever-changing. I suppose the same can be said of our reality. But things of a transitory nature here on the physical plane can cause long-lasting changes in the astral. The barrens that we can see and touch records the past with bloodstains on the sidewalk and bullet holes in storefront walls. But the astral goes further, recording the emotions that accompany these acts of violence. These events texture astral space. And just how is the astral textured these days? There's a great deal of fear and distrust. In some places, it is strong enough to impact the working of magic. But enough of my doomsaying. You must have better things to do. Is there any way I can help? Let's have a look at all these things I, I can't ever use. <laughs> well, all right, let's just head on. Move on. There's no new armor. We we'll talked to that guy, right? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna save military surplus orc guy for last, just because he's my favorite. David Fry. Okay, now he's gone. T. B. Gruberman. On his workbench, Buster currently has a mil-spec shotgun fully disassembled and its parts neatly arranged. 
He lovingly massages each piece with a microfiber cloth coated in some kind of gun oil or polish. Whatever the stuff is, it leaves the, place sh the piece shining brilliantly and pungent as hell. Got some catalogs just come in, if you, if you might be interested in an order. I can get gear shipped overnight from the manufacturer, though I won't lie to you, you'll be paying for the convenience. Otherwise, I got plenty of the usual bang-bangs waiting for a good home. What do you say? What's the new hotness when it comes to dealing damage, Buster? Well, there are two schools of thought on the matter. There are those who swear by their smart guns and such because they make the weapon more accurate, and thus more deadly. Then there are those who subscribe to the bigger boom theory, putting all their money on the biggest and baddest rounds. If you ask me, it's all situational. That's where the real advances have come. You can pa pack a panther assault cannon, but it won't do you no favors if you're fighting in a basement hallway. By the same token, a room sweeper might carve up your average pack of gangers up close and personal, but its range is a big limitation. Military life never taught me that. It was dealing to runners like yourself that afforded me this epiphany. You've got to be ready for anything. Well, that was no help at all. On that note, might I interest you in some custom mods? Perhaps some specialty grenades? Let's have a look. Look at the rifle. Flandry is a rifleman, as you may recall. Nah, I've got the best. Right. I've got the highest rifle there. Any new drones? Uh, I've got the Strato 9. Hmm. Consumables, anything you've... Maybe I should grab... Oh, remember, I have, I have three action points now. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can act, which means I actually have enough action points to throw a grenade while my drone is moving. Let's see. Smoke grenades. Just concussion. Frag grenades. These Cavalier frag grenades are nasty. 16 damage. Hmm. Yeah. So, why? Are, are they really expensive or something? Oh, they're 100 million each. Oh. Not too bad. But, I don't know, I, I think I'm okay. Let's let's check my karma. Oh, I got sixteen to spend. Yeah, let's. let's see, as I recall, if I remember correctly, you know, I could with drone control. If I get if I get level four in drone control, I can equip two drones. And now that I have three AP, I think I can run them both at the same time and still have an a, a point left over per turn. What do you think? Huh. We could bring Johnny Five out of retirement. Yeah, why not? Why not? All right. Let's see, what do we got at five? Going to cook class A drones. Well, none of those are available yet. So. All righty. Get another ten hit points. My body is now ready. This drone da oh extra damage drones do more damage if I get all right yeah alrighty three to go three left I might save them yeah I'm gonna save the last three. Downside is I won't have a slot to carry my cyber deck around anymore, but I, I don't get that much use out of it, so. Fair trade. And can you not just put the cyber deck back in? Well, it takes a weapon slot. See? Oh, okay. 
So I'll no longer be carrying that giant surfboard on my back. 